we're turning recovery on its head because 60% of the time you're going to be expanding activity, 40% of the time you're going to be resting, which means you're going to be expanding more than you rest because now you are in a very specific place in recovery where activity, expansion, movement, and actually doing more works for you as opposed to how it used to work against you in the beginning of your recovery. You see how different stages play different parts and different roles and can work in different ways. You just have to know kind of where you are, which stage you're in and how to apply that. Hey there, how's it going? Coach Junior here from the CFS recovery team. And today we're going to be talking about the topic of the four stages of recovery. Now, just to preface before we get on with this video, by no means am I a medical professional or a doctor, mental health therapist, or any type of medical professional just in general, right? So we can get that out of the way. I'm just somebody who has simply gone through this much like yourself, has recovered, and really taken notes, gotten the privilege to talk to literally thousands of people now at this point, and taking this information and giving it back to you in hopes that you can skip a few steps, learn from my mistakes, and hopefully it'll help you along your journey in recovery. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the four stages of recovery and why it's important. I'll tell you why it's important. It's because within each different stage of recovery, each stage is approached a little bit differently. And what works for you in one stage could actually work as a disservice to you in another stage. Now, with these stages of recovery, I don't really like using numbers, one, two, three, four. Mm, that's not really my style. That's not really my thing. I like using colors more so because it's a better representation of where somebody's at along their journey. Now, split into four colors. We have red, which is the lowest stage, which means these are people who are really debilitated. These are people who can't walk, can barely speak. It's very difficult to even sometimes roll over in bed, drink water, eat food, right? So this is the lowest stage. Uh, this is where the nervous system is pretty much the least resilient. And then we kind of move into the next stage, which is orange. Orange is what I like to call the activation stage, because in this stage, what it looks like Instead of uh, being just tired and debilitated, it's more of a wired and tired, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Moving on up into the third stage is what we call the yellow, right? And with the yellow, introduces a little bit more mobility, allows for a little bit more freedom of expression and movement, whether that's physically, emotionally, or mentally. And then at the very top, the final stage, which is normalcy, or a very resilient nervous system, is the green. Now. Let's rewind a little bit, let's backtrack, let's talk about the red and kind of move up the different stages and teach you how to approach each stage a little bit more effectively and efficiently so we kind of have a pretty good idea of what we're doing here, okay? Now, with the red stage, like I said in the beginning, this is a very debilitating stage, very, very physically limited in this stage. A lot of times when I talk to folks who are currently in this stage, it's lights out in the room, very dark, blinds closed, in bed, very difficult to look at a screen, very difficult to even carry on a conversation or merely rolling over in bed. Very light sound and uh, stimulation and touch sensitive from what I've seen as well. Just extremely sensitive overall. That's from the physical aspect. This is the physical experience of their condition. Remember, this condition is not just physical. It plays with the body, absolutely, but the mind is also involved. So mentally, what it looks like for somebody in the red, uh, there's not too many emotions that one can feel. Honestly, it's a lot of hopelessness. It's a lot of helplessness from what I've seen. And it's a lot of very, very dark thoughts, unfortunately. Okay, so mainly the main approach that any type of coach or myself would take whilst working with a thriver like this is really getting them into a state of rest, not just physically, because what we've seen is that physically these folks can't move, right? It's very difficult for them just to roll over in bed or maneuver around. So physically resting, that's not really the problem. When I ask someone to physically rest in that stage, it's not even like they have a choice, to be honest. They're just very limited whether they want to be or not. 
but more so getting them to mentally and emotionally rest. Because when I speak to these individuals, there's a lot of mental and emotional turmoil going on inside, right? So injecting hope, injecting the idea of you can do this, the worst is over, you're going to be okay, right? Having them relax a little bit because emotionally, mentally, they're really revved up in that sense, right? Their thoughts are very, very black and white and leaning almost borderline into the extreme when it comes to really dark thoughts, when it, we go into that hopeless, helpless territory. So injecting that hope, injecting that you know calmness into them, it can really, really help that individual's situation. And from there as well, whilst we're still in the red, we're going to introduce some very, very, very gentle but light movement. I'm talking about transitioning from laying down to eventually sitting up in bed with uh, assistance. Like uh, for me, when I was in the red, I actually had to practice sitting up a little bit with my uh, back rested against my, uh, my headboard of my bed and then using pillow assistance, kind of almost like how my chair looks like right now, assisting me like this. And I would sit up a couple times a day, um, not for long either. Usually when I work with folks in the red, maybe having them practice one or two times per day, maybe about 10 to 30 seconds maximum, okay? So we work those folks from about sitting to the, uh, you know, with, the, with their backs assisted uh, up against the bed, eventually transitioning them to sitting up for longer periods of time, introducing a little bit more frequency. And then from there, graduating them into sitting up on the side of the bed unsupported, and then having them practice that. So we're going from laying down to eventually sitting up using the headboard or the wall as some assistance, bringing some frequency up there, and then moving them to the side of the bed, and eventually from the side of the bed into a wheelchair, and then kind of getting them moving around the wheelchair a little bit, okay? And then after we get them moving around the wheelchair a little bit, then we'll transition into a walker or an assisted aid device for walking. I don't like folks transitioning from wheelchair to just practicing standing on their own two feet. I feel like that's a little bit too extreme, especially if the body is in a very sensitive place. Now, when that starts taking place and they become a little bit more mobile, going from wheelchair to walker, and then kind of moving around the house, we're going to start entering, the body's going to start entering what is called the orange zone. So we're gonna graduate out of the red into the orange. What's gonna happen in this stage physically is that energy is actually going to start coming back to the individual, okay? But energy is not going to come back in a genuine way. It's gonna come back in a, unfortunately, in a way that produces a lot of adrenaline. So uh, a lot of adrenaline, uh, a lot of our thrivers like to explain to me that they feel like they just got plugged into an electric socket, right? And they feel very electrified when they go through this stage. Unfortunately, this is the stage where a lot of folks find it very difficult to sleep because they have so much adrenaline going through them. I remember when I was recovering, going through this stage too, every time I would fall asleep, I'd close my eyes, fall asleep for about 30 seconds, and then have this sensation like I was falling off of a cliff and then doing this as I was falling asleep. Oh, and it would literally like jolt me back up so i totally understand these folks when they talk about i feel like i just got plugged into an electric socket same thing with me when i would fall asleep it would jolt me back up so a lot of adrenaline a lot of panic going through these people's bodies in this orange stage that's what it looks like physically in the orange stage mentally in the orange stage what it looks like a lot of doubts a lot of racing thoughts so that's you know the mind is going probably in this stage at about a million miles an hour, maybe even faster than that. And not just that, people's emotions in this stage are extremely unstable, right? Swinging from one extreme to another, and oftentimes it's uncontrollable. I've actually witnessed somebody on a one-on-one -on -one call in this orange stage, literally going from a fit of rage, where they were pretty much yelling at me, to eventually shifting into a very sad, tearful, apologetic state, within the span of literally 15 seconds, okay? So very unstable emotions as well. If you are a caregiver watching this video and you have somebody that you're taking care of in the orange, don't take it personally. This is happening on a, a chemical level from what we've observed as coaches, okay? Now, when we transition, 
from the orange into the yellow, because how the orange is approached is very similar, believe it or not, to how the red is approached. You want a lot of physical rest, trying your best to kind of take a step back, observe the emotions, observe the thoughts, not really engage with them uh, too deeply. Um, and then eventually they'll graduate into the yellow, right? And with the yellow, this is what I like to call the smoke clearing a little bit. The smoke kind of clears, the body stabilizes a little bit, the adrenaline starts to lower within the body, revealing the true individual's baseline, okay? Here's where people actually get stuck and confused, is because when the individual's true baseline is revealed, their main symptoms actually start to go up. So if it's pain, you'll probably experience more pain. If it's fatigue, you'll probably experience uh, more profound levels of fatigue kind of going up as well. But what they will notice is that their very strange anxiety symptoms will actually start to lessen, but the fatigue will actually start to go up as their true baseline is revealed. This is what I call the clearing of the smoke, and this is your starting line where you want to go. And what I mean by that, starting line where you want to go, this is the appropriate spot for me as a coach to be able to approach the individual and say, all right, let's start beginning the adjustment period process. We're going to go out of your comfort zone a little bit, very gently, very slowly, and uh, we're going to flare you up a little bit. We're going to pull back. We're going to relax. We're going to take it easy for the majority of the time, feel a little bit better, and then we're going to repeat the process. Once you're starting out, at least in the beginning of the yellow, the ratio of expansion to rest is pretty big. So at least for me, when the smoke started clearing for me and I started entering the yellow, my body stabilized a little bit more. My expansion was about 10%. My rest was about 90%. So it was about a 90-10 ratio. Over the, the next few weeks, you know, your body will start b building a little bit more resiliency. You go from a 90-10 to about an 80-20, right? Over the course of the next couple months, you go from 80-20 to 70-30. Keep consistent with it for another few months. 70-30 turns to 60-40. 60-40 ultimately turns into 50-50, which means that you're expanding half the time and you're resting half the time. Once you get to this place, when you're expanding half of the time and then resting half of the time, here's what you should notice, is that when you do activity, when you go out and expand, sometimes half the time, because you're there 50-50, Exercise and movement and just engaging in more activity and being more active actually makes you feel better half of the time than worse. That's what actually I've seen as a coach communicated to me. Junior, I'm getting to this place now where it's kind of weird. I used to do stuff and I would always pay for it afterwards. Now I'm in a weird funky spot because half the time I, I do end up paying for it. The other half of the time I actually end up better for it. Good you're probably in that 50-50 spot, which means you're about halfway there in recovery, which is good. And then what happens is the ratio actually shifts. You go from 50-50 to 60-40 again, but we're turning recovery on its head because 60% of the time you're going to be expanding activity, 40% of the time you're going to be resting, which means you're going to be expanding more than you rest because now you are in a very specific place in recovery where activity, expansion, movement, and actually doing more works for you as opposed to how it used to work against you in the beginning of your recovery. You see how different stages play different parts and different roles and can work in different ways. You just have to know kind of where you are, which stage you're in, and how to apply that towards recovery. And that's why I believe having a coach is so unbelievably important. All right, let's get back to it. Once we get to about 60-40, that turns into about 70-30. 70, 70 uh, percent of the time you're doing stuff, 30 percent of the time you're relaxing, right? And then we get to about an 80-20 split. This is about the sweet spot, okay? Here's why I say it's the sweet spot. It's because 80 percent of the time you're going to be doing stuff, being fairly active, just like kind of how a regular person is. But about 20 to 30 percent of the time, you are going to make a voluntary active effort to rest, to relax, right? We don't want to push, 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 go, 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 like how we used to do, get to the point of overwhelm, and then we, we keep going and getting ourselves in a lot of trouble. We're not doing that anymore, okay? Because we've changed. 
This is not just a recovery journey physically. This is a behavioral recovery journey too. And by the time you build yourself up to that place, behavior wise, they should have caught up to you as well. And you should have understood at least by then, because you went through this entire journey, how important that fundamental concept of introducing balance back into your life, even when it's quite busy, in order to sustain long term health. Okay, you want to stay about 80 20, because that's where regular people live. And you'll start to notice more and more and more and more normalcy. And then with consistency, uh, pretty much the symptoms will start to, to shed off and go away on their own. For some people, it takes longer than others. Don't compare your journey to others because yours is unique. Okay, I heard a phrase the other day that says it's not fair comparing yourself um, to other people because that means you see them as ahead of you. In order to see somebody as ahead of you, it means you must walk the same path as them. There's no such thing as an individual that walks the same path as another person. So comparing yourself to another person is completely and absolutely futile. All right, let's recap everything we just talked about here, because I know you guys, especially my brain fog folks here, are probably going to want to watch this back at half speed. Um, so you can take some notes on this. Red, orange, yellow, green. In the red, rest. Both the body, but more importantly, the mind. We start movement a little bit, very gently. From there, yellow. The nervous system is going to get some energy back. It's going to get energy back in the form of adrenaline. That means a lot of panic. That means a lot of anxiety being plugged into an electrical socket. Okay. What that looks like mentally and emotionally, a lot of racing thoughts, a lot of doubts, a lot of fears, a lot of questions, a lot of manic behavior, a lot of swinging emotions. You go into yellow, that's your starting line. Very, very, very gently, we're going to start introducing activity following that adjustment period process. You want to go a little bit, pull back, rest, feel better, repeat. When you're a little bit lower on the yellow, 90-10. Over the course of a few months, 80-20. 70-30, 60-40, 50-50. you should be doing half expansion, other half resting. Then you flip it upside down, 60-40. 60, 60 being expansion, 40 being resting. 70, 30, 70 being expansion, 30 being resting, 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time you're doing stuff, 20% of the time you are voluntarily resting, sustain, stay there, do that consistently, you're done, you healed, okay, that is the four stages of recovery, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Let's say that CFS recovery is absolutely the real deal. I actually felt like somebody had an answer, like somebody explained what was going on and it all clicked.